DNC interim chancellor has been named Friday here, Friday morning. And in his first interview, he says, we got to make sure Carolina is better off when the college sports world settles down. Holy smokes. Welcome to episode 344 of College Football's Peek Around the Corner with your host, Greg Flugar. We cover everything in college football because we love everything in college football. And if you do us well, please subscribe to our ever-going channel. Smash the like button if you like our content. Share the video with your family and friends. Let's not waste any more time. Brian Murphy of WRAL makes an article, puts out an article this morning. We're going to go through the whole thing. We're going to provide a link in the description box below the video. You can read it as well after the video. Look, this is why we've been on this story for the last weeks, and especially the last few days on our live shows, episodes, and our early peak membership episodes. We've been giving you the peak why this is important. The comments coming out of this interview by the new interim chancellor, oh yeah. It's important, for, it's very important when it comes to the next realignment wave. Let's get into it right now. Holy smokes. UNC interim chancellor, make sure Carolina is better off when college sports settles down. The University of North Carolina's new interim chancellor said it's important that the Tar Heels athletic department ends up better off when the current period of college sports instability concludes. Lee Roberts was named interim chancellor at UNC on Friday. He will replace outgoing chancellor Kevin Gustwich, who is leaving to become the president at Michigan State. Roberts, a Duke graduate, is a former North Carolina State budget director and current member of the UNC Board of Governors. It's a moment of extreme flux for college sports. This is a quote, a quote from the new interim chancellor. Possibly the greatest moment of instability that we've seen in a long time, Robert said in an interview with WRAL. It's going to be important for the leadership at Carolina, not just me, but everyone involved, to make sure that when the dust settles, Carolina is better off. ACC Uncertainty. The NCAA faces an array of challenges, including a handful of court cases that could lead to employment status for some athletes. A federal judge ruled Wednesday in a case brought in part by North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein that the NCAA could not enforce its rules on athletes who transfer more than once, such as UNC's wide receiver Tez Walker. Name, image, and likeness payments Loose transfer rules and extended eligibility due to COVID have created a free agency-like environment for college athletics. Leagues at the highest level of college athletics will undergo a radical transformation next year with the SEC and the Big Ten adding top brands to their already strong leagues driven by enormous media rights contracts that are pushing the SEC and the Big Ten well past their peer conferences. The Big 12 and North Carolina-based ACC are picking up the remnants of the now-diluted Pac-12. The ACC voted in September to expand West with the additions of Cal, SMU, and Stanford. UNC voted no, no on that expansion with Cal, SMU, and Stanford, along with Clemson and Florida State. UNC is a charter member of the ACC and shares the league with rivals NC State, Duke, and Virginia. But it was among a cluster of ACC schools that explored ways to get out of the league's ground of rights agreement that binds the conference together through 2036. This was that magnificent seven, the seven schools, as Brett McMurphy coined it, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia Tech, Virginia, Clemson, Florida State, and Miami of Florida. UNC is considered a top expansion candidate for both the Big Ten and the SEC. The leagues are expected to dominate spots in the sports 12-team playoff that begins in 2024. When asked if UNC should remain in the ACC, Roberts deferred. Now, this is the PATC money shot of this article. 
even bigger than when Robert said Carolina needs to be better off when the dust settles in the college sports world. This is the money shot right here. This is Roberts. We need to look at the way college sports are reshaping themselves. This was asked about the ACC. This is how he answered it. We need to look at the hard way college sports are reshaping themselves, he said. There couldn't be more instability in college sports generally. Our responsibility as leaders who care about the institution and care about the state is to make sure when the dust settles, Carolina is better off. No mention of the ACC. Just about the state, the institution. And then we're going to get in at the very end of this article. Peter Hands, once again, is going to make a big impact. He was the one who named the interim chancellor. And he's also the one that has, well, even more power when it comes to the next part of this story. We're, we're going to get into it. More oversight on athletics. Gusowich cast the vote against expansion for UNCF after members of the school board of trustees publicly called for a no vote. He also was involved in the UNC's effort to get a waiver for Walker, Tez Walker. Roberts said he expects athletics to take up plenty of his attention as well. It's going to take a lot of time from the interim chancellor and for whoever is the permanent chancellor, Roberts told WRAL. I think it's taken a lot of Kevin's time and I think it will continue to take a lot of time. Hint, hint, hint. Wink, wink. It took a lot of Kevin Gusswich time. It's going to take a lot of, it's going to take up a lot of time for the interim chancellor and whoever becomes the permanent chancellor. Roberts was appointed to the UNC System Board of Governors by Senate leader Phil Berger, a Republican from Rockingham County. He worked under Republican Governor Pat McCrory. UNC System President Peter Hans appointed Roberts as an interim chancellor. The Board of Governors is considering a proposal to take a larger role in athletic conference affiliation decisions. A proposal that was heard in committee in October would require schools to provide notice, to provide notice of and a financial plan for any agreement which would result in the constituents, institution, transferring, leaving, or joining an athletic conference. The item was up for discussion only at the October meeting. It would allow the UNC system president the opportunity to, to weigh on the potential impacts of the agreement. The UNC systems consist of 16 public schools, including North Carolina in North Carolina state. So let me break that down. If this proposal passes, where the board of governors has a, a, a role in conference affiliation. Let's say North Carolina does get in some talks with the Big Ten and the SEC. Well, the, the Board of Governors, uh, a committee will have the opportunity to weigh in. UNC system president will have the opportunity to weigh in on the potential impacts of the agreement. In, in other words, there has to be a plan pushed forward by the University of North Carolina to change to the Big Ten and the SEC, a financial impact, how they're going to pay for it. And make and, and we got to make sure we note this going forward. The UNC system president has the opportunity to weigh on the impact. And while he is the system president, not only of North Carolina, but of North Carolina State, the UNC system president, Peter Hans, not only named the interim chancellor, and we talked about in the live show last night in an early peak episode for members, not only does he have the, the power to name the interim chancellor, which he just did, he has the power to really select among the candidates of who the Board of Governors are going to vote for when it comes to the permanent chancellor. And not only does Peter Hans have the power in that, he's going to have the power possibly, if the, if the proposal passes, where he's going to have a big impact on the 
weighing in on the plan of North Carolina to leave the conference, to go to the SEC and the Big Ten. And remember, he has responsibilities towards North Carolina State. Now, this proposal hasn't passed yet. We're going to have to keep an eye on that just as much as we're keeping an eye on when it comes to the Chancellor of North Carolina. But it is more clear than ever. It is advantage SEC at North Carolina for now, December 15th. If it changes, we're going to report on that. But the biggest domino in the piece of the next realignment wave is North Carolina. They have the interim Chancellor now named. There's going to be some blowback on that. It's a big rock fight at North Carolina. And a lot of it, some of it doesn't have to do with the next realignment. But for us, that's the story that we're covering. And it has major impact. Major impact. The SEC, when it comes from their perspective, when it for, for their interests, they have the guy in that they want as the interim chancellor. They have the guy that they want as the system president. But Peter Hans also has to look forward after the interest of North Carolina State. Continue sticking with us here at Peek Around the Corner. We're going to be covering this mighty big story, what's going on at North Carolina. A lot of people are talking Florida State and Clemson, and I understand why. But there's a big story that's developed here in the last week at North Carolina. And this is the reason why we have been covering it day to day. The interim chancellor said, we got to make sure, we have to make sure that North Carolina, University of North Carolina, is better at, off after the dust has settled. Until next time, from all of us at PATC to all of you, please, please, you all take great care of each other. Thank you so very much.